St. Thomas on this first Sunday of Advent as we begin a new season. Uh, the liturgy will change a little. So I want to draw your attention to the service leaflet. Uh, particularly this morning, we will, during Advent, we switch to right one, traditional language. But we're going to try something new this Advent. We're doing morning prayer. Some of you know what that is. Others have no clue what I'm talking about. And it is, it is part of the Anglican tradition in the first book of Common Prayer. There's a whole history of that. Read my newsletter. But here's what's going to happen. You're going to have to go to pages, that prayer book. Just, you know, how you flip open the prayer book in the pew and it goes to page 355. We're going to have to help it go to new pages. So pay attention. Uh, things in the liturgy might appear, appear a little different. But the whole purpose of this is that morning prayer is something you can take and do at your house it doesn't have to be a part of the Sunday liturgy. And it might be something, the busyness of this Advent season, you want to bring to your own spiritual discipline. So the service begins in our leaflet. I will begin with the Advent sentences. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall, shall show forth thy praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now.
Let us read responsively Psalm 122. He was glad when they said to me, Now our feet are standing. Jerusalem is built as a city to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls. For my brethren and companions' sake, because of the house of the Lord our God, a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. The word of the Lord. Page 50, please join in the song of Mary. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on him. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you must, be, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among the nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves, 
People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourself and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dispensation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For if it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth, be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon the earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Let the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thy arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, 
may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee for the honor of thy name. Amen. Amen. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mama's going to continue where I left off last Sunday, talking, which last Sunday was Christ the King Sunday. Um, and I want to begin this Sunday with an image of a king. I don't know if you watched that TV series. I think there's another season out of The Crown. Remember that? The Crown, you've watched it. But in perhaps one of the first episodes in the first season, there is a powerful, powerful scene. And I would go so far as to call it an Advent scene. And maybe you remember it. The royal family is at one of their country palaces for Christmas when a group of carolers comes to, come to visit King George. They knock on the door and they come to visit him and sing him carols. And they process into the parlor where the family is gathering and a young girl approaches the king with a gift. And inside the box, he opens the gift and inside the box there is this large, ginormous paper crown made by the children. And the king places the crown on his head and the whole family begins to laugh. And then the king stands up, and he walks over to the young girl who's joined the rest of the carolers. And the king goes over with them, turns around, faces his family, and begins singing the last verse of In the Bleak Midwinter. It's a powerful image. It's on Google now. You can kind of Google the clip, so go home, Google it. In the Bleak Midwinter, King George, the crown, put all the stuff in there. You'll get it. Get it and watch it. King George, and here's why it's such a powerful Advent moment. King George has not told his family and his soon-to-be queen daughter that he is dying of lung cancer. So when he starts singing and looking out upon his family, he begins to cry. And the image of King George singing with tears coming down his face is this Advent scene. Because it reveals the importance of time. King George cries because he knows there isn't much time left in his own life. It will probably be his last Christmas that he celebrates with his family. But King George is probably also crying because he realizes that time has slipped away. Time has gotten away from him. 
And we've all experienced something like this, haven't we? We have looked at our loved ones or our families and said to ourselves, where has time gone? I remember when we were new parents, someone told Margaret Ann and I that the days would be long. The days would be long. That was right. The days would be long, but the years would go by fast. The days would be long and the years would go by fast. One of my family's favorite hymns in the, in the hymnal is the hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. We sing that at every family event, every funeral, every wedding, every ordination. Hopefully there's only one ordination. Verse 5 goes like this. Time, time like an ever-rolling stream, bears all our years away. They fly forgotten as a dream, dies at the opening day. Time is an ever-rolling stream that seems to get away, doesn't it? And if you have been an Episcopalian for a while, you have probably noticed that many of our Advent lessons are about the end of time. It can kind of be depressing coming here during the Christmas season. But time is an important theme of this holy season. Advent is about preparing for the birth of Christ. And if you have ever prepared for a birth, shake your heads if you know what I'm talking about, if you have ever prepared for a birth, you know that there's a lot of focus on time, isn't there? When is the baby going to get here? You think it'll be early? You think it'll be late? Do we have enough time to fix up the nursery? Do, can we do this? Ooh, I'm feeling some movement. Do you think it's time to go to the hospital right now? When we go there, they send you back. It's not time yet. Time. In the Bible, there are two words for time. The first is the Greek word chronos, which means chronological time. And if you have one of those Iron Man watches, I know, know we all have the Apple watches, but if you remember those old school Iron Man watches that I used to have, right? There was actually, you could hit the button and it would say what? Chronos. Chronos. That's what is at the top of the stopwatch. And the second word for time in Greek is kairos, and it means God's time. And it is actually the word that he's used in today's passage from the Romans. When Paul says, you know what time it is. Kairos. Kairos has something to do with an awareness of the holy and the sacred time. And as Christians in this Advent season of busyness, we live in a world of both Kronos and Kairos, a world where time dominates our lives. And the challenge that I think you and I face living in a 24-7 world is we have endless news cycles. We are constantly connected to our phones and computers, and time can really slip by. A few years ago, almost 15 years later, David Allen, y'all remember David Allen, one of my favorite books, he had to republish his best-selling book, The Art of Getting Things Done. You all remember that book, The Art of Getting Things Done? Yeah, people like me, we love that stuff. Um, it's a great book, and it had this whole system on how to get things done, and it's a little triage system, but he had to re publish it in 2001. He had to republish it in 2015. Why did he have to republish it? What happened between 2001 and 2015? Cell phones, computers, emails. And so they made him republish the book because we were so flooded with technology. The average working person now receives 150 emails a day. 150. I won't tell you the number my spouse said yesterday, but it was way over 150. You have so much coming your way. You can barely get through the chronos, the daily demands leaving you little or no time for the kairos, those holy, holy moments. Let me be clear, I stand here today guilty as convicted because in the process of checking off all those chronos lists, we have missed the kairos moments of life. Here again, the words from Romans, you know what time it is, how it is now, the moment for you to wake up from sleep. Advent 
is about looking at how we use our time. And how have you ever noticed that's one of the most important parts of the Christmas gospel? Let me take you to Christmas Eve. If you aren't planning on being here, you should come. Christmas Eve, Luke 2, we will hear it on Christmas Eve. Listen to the opening of that gospel passage. In those days, a decree, a what? A decree went out from who? Emperor Augustus, that all the world should be registered. Kronos, another thing got to go do, another thing on the list. This was the first generation, and it was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Again, emphasis on Kronos time. Who's ruling? Who's not ruling? All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered again, another thing to do on the list, with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child while they were there. Anybody know what the next word is? While they were there. The time. The time, not Kronos time, the Kairos time. The time came for her to deliver her child, end of quote. My friends, Advent is about seeing the Kairos amidst the Kronos. In other words, it is about seeing the holiness of life amidst the busyness. And that is at the heart of the Christmas story. So let me conclude by offering Two Advent themes that we could use to prioritize the holiness in the midst of the busyness. Two Advent themes. First, have a vision. Second, create space. First, have a vision. Second, create space. Have a vision. Throughout the season of Advent, we are going to hear readings and scripture and sing hymns from the prophets. Prophet History 101. Prophets wrote during difficult times. They wrote during chaos. But they all had a what? They all had a vision. A vision of holiness and a vision of hope. And it is a reminder for us in this season of Advent that we go through, we need a vision as we go through our lives. We need a vision for what our lives need to look like, or we will never experience it. It all starts with having a vision. Second, create space. Throughout Advent, we will say the song of Mary, maybe even sing the Magnificat, the song of a 14-year-old girl. A 14-year-old girl that said yes, that said yes to God. It is a reminder that this young girl did created space. She created space for God in her life and in her body. And one of my favorite prayers in the Book of Common Prayer is what we will hear on the fourth Sunday of Advent. Look that prayer up. It's about God's daily visitation to us. And it's a reminder that we are to be like Mary this season to create space for God in our lives. This is one of the reasons morning prayer can be such an important part of our Advent practice. It is an opportunity for you to create space, for you to say yes to God during a busy season of the year. So having a clear vision, creating space, are two ways to bring the holiness into the busyness so that we may wake from our monotonous sleep and see that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Please stand. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Frank, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace 
for goodwill among nations and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Julia Carrico and Dale Graham. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for all those on our prayer list at St. Thomas. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Turning to page 58, let us join in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee the most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thy goodness and love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, the means of grace. Please be seated. And welcome to St. Thomas this morning on the first Sunday of Advent. I invite you, if you're visiting, welcome if you're visiting. I invite you to join us after church in the coffee hour for coffee hour in the parish hall. Now you did a very good job with with morning prayer. This is an abbreviated version of morning prayer, but again, you see it's something. Service is a little different, but it's all it's all still there. And this is something you can take home. You can definitely use your prayer book at the house use those unused perhaps pages there are also apps you can do this and you can just follow it from an app um, so it's a very helpful prayer practice in a season that is that is very busy um, and, and wonderful in many ways I have a few announcements um, first I want to say thank you to the teenagers who helped lay sod on Monday you probably saw that in the newsletter I'm not sure where we found all that many folks but I think it was Gail I think some phone calls maybe people were grounded already the first week of Thanksgiving but they came out in numbers and they laid the sod in like less than an hour it was unbelievable so the the day school thanks those teenagers and many were a part of this parish so uh, be on the lookout speaking of the day school be on the lookout for signups for the Victorian Christmas one of the big fundraisers and that is on December the 8th and 9th am I correct on those dates downtown we need people to help grill we sell a lot of food so if you want to be a grill master you're good with the cash we need you um, the there's another announcement this morning Maddie Cook who was not able to be here today wanted the middle school and high school youth to know that next week they will gather 
and they will bake Christmas cookies with Anna. I hope Anna knows about that. Um, she seems to, so that's good. Um, they will make cookies with Anna next week. Be on the lookout for more emails. So if you're 6th six, through 12th grade, Madison will reach out to you. Um, but just want to put that, let you know that's happening next Sunday. Um, finally, as we begin this holy season of Advent, um, I want to let you know if you're looking for different disciplines, morning prayer could definitely be one. But Bishop and Mrs. Logue, Bishop and Victoria Logue, our, our Bishop of Georgia and his wife, have published an Advent daily devotional. And you can download that free on the Episcopal Diocese of Georgia website. Um, Mrs. Logue is a Franciscan. She's a part of the Third Order, the St. Francis um, Franciscan Order. So together they have, they have written this Advent devotional. So I, I definitely recommend that to you. It's free. It is, on the, it is on the website for the Diocese of Georgia. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us in offering and sacrifice to the Most High.
thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for Thou, Thy tender mercy, didst give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby as one oblation of Himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And in institute, and in His holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of that His precious death and sacrifice until His coming again. For in the night in which He was betrayed, He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of Thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, Thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before Thy divine majesty with these Thy holy gifts which we now offer unto Thee, the memorial Thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance His blessed passion and precious death, His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and rendering unto Thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are worthy for our own manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end.
Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is now. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we are not in temptation, but the deliverance of evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks to God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance of Christ died for you. Feel Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee. Preserve thy body and soul in the everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you, may the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you in this time and forth forever. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee. Preserve thy body and soul in the everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee. Preserve thy body and soul in the everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee. Preserve thy body and soul in the everlasting life. Soul and everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ
preserve thy body and soul of everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given to thee, preserve thy body and soul of everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we most heart for thee, for the God of us, who be us, and the Spirit of the Holy with the Spirit of the Holy and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and does assure us thereby of our favor and goodness towards us, and in every day our greater members of the glory, and in the body of thy Son, the blessed economy of all faithful people, and that also. God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.